All right, happy hump day to everyone. I can't believe it's already Wednesday and I can't believe that today is the 30th, which means tomorrow is already July 1st. Where did June go? Wait, where did March go? Where did April grow? Where did May go? <laughs> We're already flying. celebrating 4th of July and, and being a retired Naval officer, I'm sure that um, these holidays like Memorial Day and 4th of July, they mean so much more to you. Emily from your past and thank you again for your service and Emily and I are here today to talk to all of you about the step into the spotlight to expand your influence summit that we have coming up on July 12th and 13th and Emily is one of the uh, spotlight speakers she's also one of the experts. Um, and one of the authors in the book. So not only are we doing this awesome summit that's bringing the motivation, the inspiration and the practical tactical tips to everyone on how they can expand their influence in their life, but we're also uh, putting that into a book form that will be launched August 11th. So for now, Emily, uh, welcome to the show and let's talk a little bit about um, your chapter and why you did this. Let's talk about why you did this. Why did you want to be part of this summit? Why did you want to be part of this book? What does it mean for you to expand your influence? Well, I wanted to, you know, I think to expand your influence, you got to leave your comfort zone a little bit. And I remember when I first got a job that required public speaking back in 2005, I was like terrified. I was in the spotlight, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I, but I took that job and I did it and I realized it's not as bad as I thought. So I just want to help other people um, figure out how they can put their themselves in the spotlight, realize that, you know, you know that I'm not anybody special. I just did it. And so to help other people figure out how, how they can just do it. Yeah. I, what do you think is that one piece that holds um, people back from leaping, from stepping into the spotlight, from taking that step? Yeah, I think it's, it's a, it can be a little scary to put yourself out there. Um, I think that we all have, I know we all have like a judge. We judge ourselves. That's our inner critic. We judge other people, you know, kind of subconsciously, and we judge search circumstances or situations. So maybe we had a time in the past where, I don't know, in school, we were called to the front of the classroom to say something. We were terrified and we kind of relive that when we have to go have to go public speak. So I think, you know, what holds us back a lot is our is our own minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And so you know, Emily, in your chapter and, and in our interview, you give a lot of tips on how um, we can overcome that, right? And so I know you have had an amazing story um, and have had to overcome some uh, challenges in your life. You know, we all have, which is what molds us to where we are today. But talk about why your focus is really on um, yourself right now. Yeah, I feel like my whole my whole life, I, I put others first, you know, the Navy's mission when I was in the Navy, um, my job, I put that a lot of times before myself and my health. And then I was a single parent. And, um, you know, I had some challenges with my kids that I've talked about on the podcast that I host the onward podcast, and they're doing great now. But, you know, finally, uh, my kids were out of the house. Um, and I was at the minimum retirement age and I decided that I am going to retire. I called it a graduation from the Navy and I'm going to do something else with my, with my life. Um, and in the past two years, since I did that, I've really done a lot of work on myself, a lot of introspection. I've just put myself first. And that's what I write about in the chapter, what I write about, you know, what I've been through a little bit and how others can do that as well. You know, you just get buried under a mount, mound of responsibilities and you, you forget even to dream. Like, what do I want? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I remember when my children moved out and I, I told my husband one day, I'm like, can you tell me why we're still eating fish sticks? Like, is that something <laughs> that we eat? Or are we just eating it because we used to buy it because the kids lived here and they like to eat them? Like what? I didn't know what stores I wanted to shop in anymore, what my favorite color was, what I wanted to do for fun because everything revolved around my children. 
And Oprah um, had said it once on a, a on her talk show. Someone on her talk show had said, "Our children pass through our lives; mm -hmm. they shouldn't become our lives." Right. We have to remember that we always need to be in the forefront, and we're the ones that they're um, that they are echoing, right? That they're that they're um, that they're watching. We are the ones that that we're, that are being modeled. You know, we're modeling for them. And if we're modeling that our lives don't matter and that our health and our care doesn't matter and that you just have to kill yourself to take care of other people, then that's what they're going to do when they get older. And we don't right. want our children to do that, right? So what we don't realize is we just keep modeling the same behavior, expecting it to change. It's, you know, that's called insanity. But the generations after generations after generations continue to do this. Women continue generation <clears throat> after generation because we're not being modeled to any differently. Right, right. Yeah, right. So, you know, that's why I decided and like right after I retired, my children's um, father, my former husband passed away from cancer and I saw him die with regrets. And that even more so um, created an urge in me to just create a life that I love living and to not wait. And that's what I want to encourage other people to do as well. And it was, you know, at first I thought, well, what, what would I love? And then you can think, well, I would love that. But then our, our mind tells us, well, but you can't do that because, and I like to relook at that and say, well, what if you could do it? How would you do it? Because so let's not let our minds hold us back. Yeah. And I think we should ask the listeners then, if not now, when? Right. Because we don't know. You know, I had a client that I was working with, Emily, not too long ago. And from the time I met her um, and she signed into my program to work with me, within a month and a half, her husband had gotten cancer and passed away. Wow. And she was not prepared for that. Yeah. I don't Bruce think anyone prepared. was prepared. For yeah, that. and Bruce wasn't prepared to die. I've got his files right here in my office. Um, uh, and he had like three or four files on retirement, the things he was going to do, how he was going to really enjoy it. And um, I mean, he liked his work and everything, but I think he could have retired earlier. When he passed away, he was 64. Yeah. So um, yeah, don't wait. We make a lot of excuses. We should just call mm -hmm. a spade a spade, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone that, that um, has a an excuse for it there's a, another reason bigger than why they they can't do that because i well right. i can't because i can't because and i can't equals i won't so i'm just going to call it out to everyone and say if you are today not living the life you desire like emily last month went to a problem Magov. was that what you went to class or what was it that you went to was it a it wasn't taekwondo what class did oh you tai chi tai chi and I would not have been able to do Tai right. Chi a couple of years ago because I was so kind of like hyper and driven by push energy. And my one of my saboteurs is a hyper achiever. And I would have thought, this is stupid. This is boring. This is like moving too slow. And I really, when I retired, I really wanted to learn to be, but I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to slow down. I thought it would automatically happen when I retired, but it didn't. I love <laughs> Tai Chi now. I love it. So I think we also need to understand that your environment does not create and mold who you are. Mm -hmm. We've all come from different environments. What creates and molds who you are is you, your choices that you make mm -hmm. every single day. And you either choose to live the life that you desire. And I know that sounds cheesy to some people because they're like, yeah, well, what is that? Are you happy? Do right. you love your life? Do you wake up every morning loving what you do? Do you have no regrets when you go to sleep at night? If you're doing that every day, then you're living the dream and congratulations. If you are not, Emily and I here are offering you an opportunity to come to a summit where we're going to have 11 experts talk to you over the span of two days. So it's just a couple of out two and a half hours a day and giving you practical tips that you can take and apply to your life today. And by the way, I forgot to mention a ton of free opportunities for you right. to do worksheets with them and all types of things that will help you realize, are you living the life you desire today? Are you expanding your influence the way you want to? What's holding you back? Why haven't you said yes to you? 
Why are, what are you still waiting for? And, you know, our, our life is just passing us by. Like we started this call. Where the heck did 2021 already go? <laughs> Everyone couldn't wait to get to 2020. I or 2021. I actually really enjoyed 2020 because it made me slow down a lot for someone that's extremely active as like I was. I loved it, you know. And now 2021's already almost gone. So are you going to, you know, are you in the same place that mm -hmm. you were in 2019 or 2020? And back then, did you say? have a dream of where you wanted to go and did you get there? Where do you want to be in 2022? And how do you know you're going to get there? I worked with coaches to help me with my mindset. Um, I would not, I don't think I would, I know I wouldn't have moved this far along without the help of coaches. So I love what you're doing with the summit, Colleen, to provide so much value to the women that attend, that they can learn how to step into that spotlight, how to put themselves first how to yeah. live a life that they love living. And money can't be an issue on this one because it's free. <laughs> so you get to come for free to the summit. I mean, there's no hook to that. There's nothing. And then while you're at the summit, you get to put your name on a list if you want to say, hey, I want to be notified when the book comes out because I can't wait to now read all the chapters once all the authors have had the opportunity to speak. So if you, I, I love the way you said that, Emily, if you are still in the same place and you keep saying, um, I'll get around to it. That's what I want for next year. This is where I want my life to go. You have to take action. If you're right. a dreamer, you're just going to sit and dream every day until you actually take the action and put yourself first and put your desires and what you want to do in your business, how you want your relationships to be in your family, how your relationship is with yourself, your health, all of that. We encourage you to come to this summit July 12th and 13th for two days. It's free. The link is below. All you have to do is click it. And then you'll get to meet Emily even deeper as we dive into more about her, her story, and a little bit about her chapter. So thank you, Emily, so much for being with us today. You guys all, link is below. Make sure you guys click that and join us for July 12th and 13th. Thanks for coming today, Emily. It was great speaking with you. Thank you. All right. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.